of helping students get prom dates. So I decided I needed to help you with your prom dates. Now, um, I developed this a number of years ago in my old school after I observed something, and um, uh, students found this very helpful. Um, I t typically would tell the kids, because you know, my job is not just to teach you chemistry, but I must help you with your personal lives on occasion, right? And I know the prom is a long time away. I mean, what, if, uh, six months or whatever. But it's good to think about the prom, okay? So how do you get a date for the prom? Well, it starts with a story. This, it's hard to kind of explain this, but I'll, I'll draw a picture, okay? All right, so I'll, pictures are good. I'll tell you a story. Here's the story. At my old school, I uh, had an office. Um, let me draw a picture of a map here. This is where my office was, back here in the hole. This was Mr. Bergman. And the printer, this is the, this is, this is the chem lab right here. All right, and big doors, you know, whatever, big door right there, doesn't matter. This is stairs, of course, yeah. And then there was a room over here, which is where the printer was. Actually, and then the hallway went off to the side here. It's a big L, actually, this was like a big a U thing, and there were uh, rooms all over the room. But anyways, this was a window right here, and over here was the student parking lot. So one morning, early in the morning, uh, as I normally at my school early in the morning, I uh, walked out and I was going down to the printer. And there was this young lad, there's a big window and the stairs, these stairs, it was kind of like a, a breezeway, you had like a overhead ramp, you know, so if you were looking at the school from that perspective, you would see, you know, two-story building, and then there was this breezeway, and then, then another two-story building, right? And so this kid was sitting right here, looking out the window, and he looked odd. You ever seen a child who looked odd? I walked down to the printer, and he kind of, he actually was sitting on the floor. And I walked by and went, okay, well, you know, he's quiet, it's before school. They allowed kids in before 7 o'clock or something weird, like, the, you know, you could actually, like, open the doors. So she, he was just sitting there, but he had this sort of intent look on his face. And I thought, that's, that's just odd. When got my printer, I walked back, and he was looking. And as I walked by the second time to go back to my office, he got up and he was looking. And I, you know, I just kind of glanced off outside the window and I said, "Huh, is that?" Man, I didn't think too much of it, but there was a pretty young lady walking up up the up the, uh, you know, and she was walking up here. You know, I didn't think too much of it, okay, because of course I, you know, it's not my business. And so I walked back into my office and oh, and and the printer, of course. And it needed paper, and so I had to go back and put paper in it and change. The, it was some kind of a printer problem. I don't remember the details. And so there was a printer problem, so I had to basically walk back into my office, and then I had to promptly walk back out to go back to the printer. One of those weird, I don't know what the deal though. but anyways. And as I walked out, the boy got up, and he walked this way. And he kind of walked weird. I mean, not like he's, you know, he was walking. He just, just was like, something was shifty about this young man. So I said, okay, all right. And so now I'm just perplexed because at the moment he gets, he's just about to get to the edge of this corner and then he stops. And so now I'm just intent. I thought, I'm just going to see what's going on. Just as he does this, she comes up the stairs and she turns this way because he's now facing this way and walking back this way. So he knew which way she was going to go. She could have gone this way, by the way. It was kind of a two, you know, she had a 50-50 shot. So either he'd scoped it out. Yeah, he's like a stalker. And so I couldn't quite figure out what he was 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 attempting to do. And so, um, Chase, I need some help here. Now I will be the girl. I need a big wide aisle, though. Okay, how about over here? Scoot yourself in. All right, you've got to be over there. Okay. And you know, and she was carrying her books in her hand. This is years ago because, of course, they didn't, they didn't have backpacks, or I don't know what the deal was. I don't know. I think she'd have a backpack, but he knew she didn't have a backpack, so that's part of the story, I think. Uh, you know, all right, let's just kind of walk. If you, were to, if you were to walk by somebody, you know what we do. Hey. Say, how are you going? You know, she's got somewhere to go. You do that, right? But that's not what he did. Okay. <laughs> 
she's walking by, and he was off kind of looking off this way. You know, or the opposite. In his case, it'll be that direction. He was off looking that way, but as, and there's like two kids in the hallway. Right? It's a big wide hallway, right? You'd think you'd be able to avoid somebody, right? But I think this was unplanned. So what, what he did is he went and he bumped into her book. Ah! And what do you think that young man did? Oh, oh, sorry. Oh. Sorry. oh, and so he was so apologetic. And guess who I saw at the prom that year? Both of them. The two of them together. <laughs> Not just, see, it's right. And you see, I see, oh, I get it, I get it. I know how you can get dates for the prom. Well, here's the deal, right? So here's my observations, right? So I made a little PowerPoint. All right. Oh, this was supposed to be like uh, a guy. Oh, well, we have some pictorial issues because it went into the, into the podcasting. All right. <laughs> he looks drunk. Okay. Okay. Here's my theory. Okay. If you want to get a date for the prom, you have to hit girls. Okay. If you want to get dates for the prom, you have to hit girls. If you do not hit girls, no date. This is where they all bunk together. It was supposed to be in color. Oh, well. Okay. Now, wait a second, though. How do you hit them? Okay. All right. So, Chase, now we're going to switch roles. You can be the girl, right? All right. Now, is this the way that you hit him? You walk across, you go, whoo! <laughs> is that going to work? No. She, she's going to turn around, and she's going to kick you in the you-know-what, and you're going to deserve it. Right? So, probably not. So, how do you, where do you hit the girl? Right in the... In the books! You've got to hit her in the books. So, here's my theory. All right, here, I'm a scientist, you know. So I said, you know, collisions, they occur all the time, right? You're, you're bump, bumping into kids all the time. Did you realize that these could be potential prom dates someday? When you bump into the kids, collisions occur all the time. But sometimes you make a collision and it doesn't get you a date, does it? Now, that's a bummer, isn't it? That's probably good, though, right? Every kid you bump into you want a date with? It's probably not such a good idea. So I had some ideas. How do you get a date? Well, you got to hit them, first of all, in the right place. If you hit them in the backside of the head, they're going to kick you into the you-know-what. And so, um, but you've got to hit them with enough energy. If you don't hit them with enough energy, what if you were just to kind of just lightly bump into me? Wouldn't I wouldn't have dropped my books and we wouldn't have had that moment where you're being so helpful and being such a nice I young man. Yeah, it could, have been, it could have been a moment like that. But they, they yeah. <laughs> so he also had to hit her in the books because, all right, I need your help again. Hit her in the books. Yeah. Now, turn around. Now, is this going to work? Like that? Maybe. That might have worked, actually. Hit him in the backside. You know, you've got to hit him in the right place. So, um, so you know, uh, us chemistry teachers said, well, it's got to draw a graph. Okay. And so this is the chemistry dating graph. You start here with low energy, and then you hit him, and then, of course, you make a oh, very happy couple, and then they live happily ever after. Um, I showed this to Mr. Sams, and you know what he said? He said, no, see, that's, that might be true in real life, but it's not true in uh, in high schools. High schools, this is more like the graph that it should look like right here, shouldn't it? All right. You guys got a... No, no, they, they have... They, they live happy, and now it, the picture isn't as good. He's got a knife, and they're mad, and they're going to killing each other, you know. Yeah. My pictures don't work right. This is a like bummer. So, you know, because, you know, you know what happens to, mo like, 99.99% .99 of all high school romances, they, what... They break up, so yeah, they all break up. You know that. And hopefully they're not stabbing each other. So how can we increase your chances of getting a date? I got some weird pictures. All right, so how can I, I give you a better chance to get a date? Okay, here's my ideas. All right, number one, I can shorten the passing periods. That's somebody running. Okay. What if we were to shorten the passing periods? So, you know, let's say, you know, uh, what's prom in May? So let's say about March. I go to I, I go I go to to, to Miss Spry and I say Miss Spry, we need to shorten passing periods this week because the kids need to get dates. And she's gonna say, Oh yeah, that's good. Yeah, we, we need to have everyone have a date for the prom. So she says, Okay, right? Why is that gonna be good? You're gonna be running through the hallways. You're gonna be running into more girls. You are gonna hit more girls and you are gonna get more dates. You might be actually onto something. I am. I could shrink the halls. What if I were like just 
like take all the desks and like put them all in the hallways and just shrink all the hallways. You don't like run into each other more. You'd you bump more into more kids. You'd hit more girls, and you'd like get more dates. Then you have, like, a problem taking between guys, you'll bump well, I, I wasn't telling you. I didn't how to get a date. I wasn't telling you how to be selective in your date. This is kind of a random dating thing. Okay. Yeah. Actually, there's a matchmaker thing. All right. I'll shrink the halls. And uh, you know, the other thing, you're right. I could get a matchmaker because actually, I know how you get dates. Right, Chase, you don't just call up your girl and say, hey, babe, let's do this prom thing. Do you do that? We'll make a chicken sandwich. We're going, we're going to McDonald's, right? Yeah, is that what you do? No. This is what Chase does. See, Chase tells Trevor that he likes somebody, and then Trevor tells her girlfriend, and then her girlfriend tells her, and then, you know, isn't that really how it works? And then they walk up to you and you have an awkward moment. And you're like, do you like me or what are you, what are you doing? Yeah, it's an awkward moment. But you see, this this is going to work. See how this will work? Chase, I need your help again. All right. All right. All right. Let's say that I have heard that Chase likes me. And I am just, who that boy? He is so cute. He, or hot, or what is the word these days? I don't know. I'm just, uh, so I, I know. And I, I've been in Mr. Bergman's chemistry class and I'd heard about this prom date thing. And so you see... Chase is kind of just walking down the hallway. You can see, I know he likes me. And so I'm carrying my book, but get, I'm just barely carrying my book. Oh, oh I dropped my book. Oh. And so, you see, it did not take much to knock down. I'm not holding on to my book like this. I'm not doing this thing, right? It's not like football jockey. I'm, I'm, I'm just barely holding on, because I want to drop my book, right? Because I think he's just hot or Thanks. handsome or whatever you are. What are you, hot or handsome? What's the latest word these days? I don't know. I'm some old dude. You see, so, um, you see what would happen there is, um, you see, instead of having to knock the books, it took a lot less energy to knock the books out of my hand, so it, like, lowers the, the, the energy it takes, the, the dating energy, to, to make me, like, drop the books. Isn't that cool? I got another idea. What if we were to, like, uh, go out, go down to one of them other schools, you know, like Cheyenne Mountain or something like that? All right. And so let's just... Let's just bring in a bunch more boys. So let's just bring, let's say, you know, we need, we need an infusion of boys to this school. Now, they are boys. They're not men, not guys, so don't, don't panic. But we're going to bring a bunch more boys in, so we're going to, uh, they're going to enroll in the school for a couple of months, right? Uh, increase our enrollment and all that kind of stuff. And so we're bringing a bunch more boys into uh, Woodland Park High School. Well, what's that going to do? Yeah, you're going to, like, bump into more boys. And if you bump into more boys, then you get more dates, won't you? Right? That'd be cool, wouldn't it? Want to have more dates, right? Or, of course, conversely, we can bring in more girls. So we'll go to, I don't know, Harrison or wherever and bring in more girls. Or I don't know. I don't know the schools down there. Is Harrison not a good school or what? There's people there that could beat me up. Okay, well. When I did this at the old school, there was like St. Mary's Academy School for Girls, and we'd bring them in from there. They were less fancy it's a girl school. Oh. Yeah, like a girl like this big and a girl like this big. I broke up one of those. I broke up a chick fight at the football game here about three weeks ago. Here at Woodland Park, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was, uh, this girl was fighting me. I, she just, she weighed nothing, though. She's a little freshman girl. She was going at this other girl, though. All right. Oh, one other thing, girls, I've noticed this problem with you. You guys understand this. You travel in packs. You, if you want a date and you travel in this clump of girls, you have no chance of getting a date because no boy's going to run into you, right? You, you pack in this, you, like, you, you go like this. You know, I wonder, you know, Trevor, you play football, right, and you're like a lineman or something, but maybe what you guys could do, if, let's say there's a particular girl that you want to date for. You have to get your buddy, so are you going to say, all right, you got to run into the first because you want the girl in the middle of the pack. So how are you going to do this? Well, you got to, like, make a hole, right? And so Chase has to knock off the one girl, all right, and William gets the other girl, and then eventually it opens a hole, and you can bump into your sweetie, all right? All right. All right. So so how do I get you a date for the prom? I got to shorten the passing periods. I got to shrink the halls. I got to get you a matchmaker. I can get to bring more boys or girls and then uh, you can't travel in packs. Think it'll work? It worked for our guy, right? Our story, the guy at the beginning. He he got a date. Right? In the stalkerish way. 
But she never knew, so that I know of. All right. So why in the world do I do this today? <laughs> because, frankly, this has nothing to do with how to get a date for the prom. Because how do atoms and molecules react? All right. Collisions are what cause molecules to react. You see, this is actually a silly analogy with a with a lesson in this unit. If you can remember how you get date for the prom, you know how to increase the amount of a reaction, or frankly, we call it the rate of the reaction, which is what we're studying today. All right, the collisions. What are collisions? When molecules collide. All right, so when the boy hits the girl. Or really, the girl can hit the boy, if you want to go down to it. This is an equal opportunity world, anymore, uh, is that the molecules must collide. Boom. Now, how do I make the reaction happen faster? What is shorten the passing periods? All right, if you shorten the passing periods, the molecules move faster. What am I actually talking about here? Increasing the temperature. Because remember, when you increase the temperature, molecules move faster. So if you want to increase the rate of reaction, then you increase the temperature. You know this when you take milk out of your cupboard and you leave it outside. What happens to it? You keep milk in your cupboard. Or in your uh, refrigerator. <laughs> and you put it on the cupboard. If you take milk out of the refrigerator, it going, it's going to heat up and it's going to turn sour. And it turns sour quickly because it's warmer, doesn't it? Because now the molecules in the milk are moving faster. The reactions, the souring reaction is taking place more rapidly, and it sours the reaction. All right, you burn more calories when you have a fever because your body is at a higher temperature. Okay, things like that. Or if you're just exercising. Oh, that's true. A fever. Yeah, if you are if you are exercising, you are going to burn more calories. You actually, you're using more energy to exercise, but also your temperature will uh, rise. You get kind of flush in the face, right? What about uh, 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 shrinking the hallways? You're decreasing the volume. That's correct. So what's actually happening, though, is you are increasing the pressure. So if you have molecules and you compress them, you see what's going to happen is they're going to collide more frequently because as you shrink the hallways, you have the same number of molecules, the same number of students walking through, running through the hallways, walking through the hallways. They're going to collide more frequently. It kind of all comes down to how fast the collisions are and or how frequent the collisions occur. The only way to change how fast the collisions occur or how fast the molecules are moving is to change the temperature. Otherwise, you're going to just increase the number of molecules that um, uh, hit each other. Okay. What about what were my other analogies? Uh, more boys or more girls? That's we'll do that one. More boys or girls would be you are actually increasing what? Concentration. There's a higher concentration of boys, or there's a higher concentration of girls. So therefore, that will increase the rate of the reaction, right? Or both, you know, it doesn't really matter. What else? Uh, we'll do the matchmaker last. What about the packs? This isn't how many guys did the mold day thing. Okay, what did Mr. Sams do with the uh, pyro, the pumpkin? He breathed fire, right? Yeah. How did he breathe fire? He ignited him. All right, what he had is he had he had pyro the pumpkin. Right, I don't know how to draw it on the side, but there you go. There was a candle. That was a pumpkin, yeah, with it sort of cut out, right? This is a candle. And what we had is we had a, a powder. It's called lycopodium powder. It's the same stuff, you know, when the, when the pine trees uh, sort of shed, and it gives that really fine yellow stuff? That's lycopodium powder. It is very, 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 very fine. Um, ground up to just just the smallest. Think of like, you know how uh, cornstarch is just really, really fine? It's like 10 times finer than cornstarch. 
and then powdered sugar and then even sh- flour. And so what happens is is that when he blew this out, it was just a bu- it's it's a solid powder. All of a sudden this powder, which happens to be flammable, ignited quickly. But if you took a lycopodium powder and you put it on the table and just lit a match, it wouldn't light very much. Because you see which ones reacted. If I get a big uh, group of the powder, what part's going to react? The ones on the outside. But all the ones in the middle are can't get in contact with the oxygen. You need the oxygen to collide with the lycopodium powder and have an ignition source. And so it's spread out. So this is called what? What are you increasing? It's called the surface area. That's right. You've seen this. How many had some coffee this morning? What's the sugar in it? How do you put your sugar in there? When you put your sugar in your coffee, you either put a sugar cube, but you might also put powdered sugar or a, a granular sugar. Which one will dissolve faster, a cube of sugar or granular sugar? Granular. Why? Because it's spread out. It has more surface area. All right, and the matchmaker. Anyone know what the matchmaker is? Anybody figured it out? Huh? Yeah, a matchmaker adds a catalyst. So the matchmaker is a catalyst. A catalyst is a chemical that speeds up the reaction but is not a part of the reaction, which actually works great in the analogy because the person who does the matchmaking is not a part of the bond, if you will, right? They don't make they cause the bond to occur, but they don't actually become a part of the bond unless somehow they steal your girlfriend or whatever, I guess, or whatever that works. Actually, that happened to me once when I was here about your age, I recall. <laughs> Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I was kind of, yeah. I was supposed to help him get the date for the prom or how that. I don't remember all the details. Oh well, I have to think about it. But anyways, that's called a catalyst. And there was a couple of important graphs. I don't. Did you have you seen graphs like these before? This graph. Oops, hold on. I didn't do that right. This graph. This is actually the reactants. This is the products. And this right here amount that climbed this year, that's called the activation energy. The energy it takes to get the reaction to get going. And the reactants have more energy than the products. This is actually an exothermic graph. This value right here, the value from here to here is called delta H. That's for an exothermic reaction. For an endothermic reaction, it's kind of the reverse deal. The reaction starts low and stays high, where this is the reactants and this is the products. And um, right here is the activation energy. And then delta H is from here to here. Okay, there's the energy of products have more energy than the reactants. And that's endothermic. So this is endo. And this right here is exothermic. The rea- oops, this one is. Um, the reactants have more energy than the products. So it goes down, if you see. That's why it's negative. Okay. And what does a catalyst do? A catalyst lowers the activation energy, just does this. So it makes it a smaller hill to climb. Okay? So that's kind of how you get date for the prom. Isn't that crazy? Got to hit girls in the right place, in the right place, with the right amount of energy, correct activation energy. And if you don't, you won't get a date. Good? Well, girls, you can hit boys. You know, this goes equal opportunity in players.